So let's uh, let's just look before we head onto the screen. Let's just take a look back at our fixed income course that we took, and you'll remember that when we got to bond pricing, there were two uh, uh, there were two prominent calculations that you would do. Number one is you would find the present value of a bond uh, given the coupon rate, given the term to maturity, and given the market interest rate. Or number two, you would find the yield to maturity uh, given that you already knew how much the bond was today. You, you knew its present value, you knew its future value, its term to maturity, and its coupon. When you found the price of the bond, you tended to discount each cash flow with the same market discount rate. And while that is correct, a more correct way to do it would be to discount each cash flow by its own zero rate or spot rate. So that brings up the question, well, what, what do you mean zero rates? Well, let's talk about a zero coupon bond. Zero coupon bonds, basically, that's what it means. The coupon is 0%. It doesn't pay interest. It's simply sold at a discount and it uh, matures at par. So that you buy it at a discount, you hold it for the period of time, and it matures at par. The interest rate implied on this is called the zero rate or the spot rate. So a five-year zero would, or, or would be the same as calling it the five-year spot. The zero rates are the spot rates. Um, it's hard to find a five-year zero. Typically, you can find anything less than one year you can find zero rates for because that's money market funds and all money market uh, instruments, all money market securities, anything with initial uh, issuance to maturity of a year or less are sold at discount. So it's easy to find a, a three month, a six month, a one year zero rate. It's hard to find a two year zero rate unless you're looking at strip bonds. Uh, and and uh, even then, you might not find the term you're looking for. So uh, we'll figure that out later. But right now, what I, I, I want to stick with what I'm doing. So let's revisit bond pricing. But this time, instead of pricing out a bond, instead of pricing out the present value of the bond, using a continuous, using a, a fixed market rate of return like 9%, discount the bond at 9% and discounting it five years at 9%, we're going to see the more correct way to discount the cash flows on a bond. And by the way, if you're going to do the CFA, you've probably already seen the, the CFA logo in the videos uh, in, earlier for this chapter. If you're going to do the CFA, you got to know how to do this. So, if you pay attention here, uh, kill two birds with one stone. If you've had the fixed income course, you've already covered this, but here's a good, uh, a good uh, uh, review. So let's say that we found some zero rates. We found a, a six-month uh, uh, security out there that's yielding 5%. It's a zero coupon bond or a zero coupon T-bill yielding 5%. We found a one year in the same market yielding 5.8, the 1.5 at 6.4, and the 2 at 6.8. Notice I say we will calculate these later. I will show you how to calculate zero rates from coupon bonds. So we can find coupon bonds and we can calculate what the zero rate would be on them. All right, so how do we find the price of this bond? Well, we discount each of the cash flows of what of this bond this is a two-year six percent semi in other words semi-annual it's hard we don't really say semi-annual all the time you just call it a, 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 a semi a two-year six percent semi which means on a 100 point system because we price all bonds in a 100 point system this pays six every year or three every uh, every payment so every payment is three we're going to get four payments three 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 and the last payment will also be our future value of 100. So we will discount the first one, 3, by the zero rate, 5%. But be careful here. We are continuously compounding or continuously discounting now. Since we're discounting, remember, it's the negative sign. You put the negative sign above it. If we're moving forward in time, if we're finding future value of something, it's a plus sign. So it's 3E negative 0. Point, and it's 5%, 0, 0.5 times the term, the term is 0.5. It's not a full year. So there's the first cash flow discounted, plus 3E. The second cash flow would have the second spot rate. We're discounting it. the second cash flow we get in, in two periods from now, which is a year. So we're looking for the one-year Z rate, the zero uh, coupon bond rate. 
and we get negative 0.058 times 1. Plus, the third one is discounted. Remember, put that negative sign there. 6.4, 0.064 times 1.5, plus our last coupon, plus our future value. So the last one is 103 e to the negative 6.8, 0 0.068 times 2. There we go. And if you do all of this, uh, this is easily solved on, a, on, on, on any calculator because there are no, we're not solving for anything. We know every, every value. 98.39. Now let's say that instead you wanted to find, instead of finding the, uh, 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 the present value, you were asked to find the yield, the yield to maturity uh, of this particular, uh, um, in this particular example, because these are the two most common calculations, find present value or find yield to maturity. Well, yield to maturity is, you equate your present value, we know what it is, 98.39, would equal 3e to the negative, how long, for 0.5, but we don't know the rate. We're, we're trying to calculate the yield. So y is our variable in this case, right? But we know it's for half a year. Plus 3e to the negative, it's negative 1. So we don't have to put the 1. We could just put negative y. Plus 3e to the negative 1.5y plus 103e to the negative 2y. And we basically solve for y. This is, uh, uh, you can use a spreadsheet and a, a goal seek function uh, uh, for this particular one. Uh, solving it iteratively is going to be rather difficult, but one thing that you could do to start out is say, look, it's 98.39. Is this a, uh, a discount bond or a premium bond? Well, it's a discount bond. Since it's a discount bond, that means the market rate is going to be higher than 6%. So you might start out at 7%, uh, and see what you get, uh, and you'll either be above or below 98.39, and then you can go 6.5, and you can slowly get to where you want to be. If you program a spreadsheet for this, it should be fairly quickly, but a goal seek would be better uh, to calculate it. But this is a, a, a rather difficult calculation to do on your calculator or to solve algebraically, but you get the idea we're solving for y. There we go. Par yields, we can calculate uh, par yields for a bond. And a par yield is the coupon rate that causes the present value of the bond to equal the par value. So no matter what the present value is, uh, we're going to say it's 100. So uh, the present value equals the par value. Since bonds are priced on the 100-point system, we're going to say PV is 100. So for the two-year semi, um, the present value is not 98.39 anymore. We're going to make it 100. And what is our unknown? Our unknown is our coupon. And since uh, it's semi-annual, it'll be coupon over 2. And then, of course, we have E2. Remember, we have the 5%. We're discounting negative 0 0.05 times 0 0.5 plus the unknown, C over 2, E to the negative 0 0.058 times 1 plus c over 2, e to the negative 0 0.064, whoops, I don't know how I did that one, 0 0.064 uh, times 1.5, plus c over 2, plus, what is it, 100, there we go, c over 2 plus 100, e to the negative 0 0.068 times 2. And, as we can see here, you can solve for this, you can solve this term, you can solve this term, there are no unknowns in here, and we can solve this term and expand, isolate C after this, after we have all of the, uh, uh, the constants. It's just simply a matter of isolating C. You will find that C equals 6.87%. Therefore, and if C is 6. Point, uh, sorry, not 6.87%, 6.87%. Uh, per year, and it's divided by 2 because it's semi-annual. So 6.87, we know that that's the par yield. The par yield would be 6.87% per annum with m equal to 2. 
but that's not continuously compounded. That's just 6.87% per annum uh, with m equal to 2. Well, what if we wanted the continuous compounding rate on this? Um, actually, just let me clarify one point because I had to do this in class several times because some students said, wait a minute, how do you get from uh, six, the coupon being 687 to 6.87%? Well, it's very easy. Remember, we're doing the two-year semi. The, originally, it was 6%, right? So imagine the two-year semi is at 6.87%. Um, what's the coupon? Well, since it's priced on the 100-point system, the coupon is $6.87, 6.87. And uh, this is semi-annual, so you're simply just dividing it by 2. So that's all that is. So all we did was actually solve the C. We just solved for C and dividing it by uh, 2. If we didn't divide it to, uh, uh, by 2, we wouldn't have multiplied by 2 in the end. We would have got 3.435. 3.435 for each payment. And we would have had to say, well, that's not the par yield. We would have had to multiply it by 2 then. So rather than multiply the answer by 2, let's just divide our variable by 2 to begin with. So a 2-year semi at 6.87% would equal 100. It would equal, uh, that's the coupon, that would align with these spot rates. Remember now, these Z rates, whatever these Z rates are, that's what would make it 100. Now, here, this is, this is the, the new information here. If we would have said the two-year semi at 6.87 when the market interest rate is 6.87, you would have said that's a par bond because you would have discounted each cash flow by 6.87. And since the coupon was 6, 6.87, you knew it. But here we're discounting each cash flow by a different amount. So what would the coupon be based on these Z rates? What would the coupon be to make it a par bond? And that is the par yield. So we call that a par yield. So we know if we're looking in the market saying, well, the market rate of return is 6.87%. Based on these spot rates, that's a par yield. That would turn this bond into a par bond. That's what that means. That's all it means. So we want it in continuous compounding. Well, you'll remember that uh, uh, our continuous compounding rate was M ln 1 plus Rm over M. By the way, Every time you have a chance to write it out, write it out. You do this uh, eight to ten times, you know what, you'll be able to, you'll, you'll always remember this. It'll be part of your memory. So every time you have a chance to write it out, write it out. So what is our M? Our M is 2, 1 plus, and what's our RM? 0 0.0687 over 2. Uh, and all we have to do at this point is solve for, uh, uh, this is all solvable with a calculator and we will get 0 0.0675 or 6.75%. So, 6.75% compounded continuously is the same as 6.87% compounded semi-annually. And you'll notice that, of course, continuous compounding will always be a lower rate simply because we have more compounding periods. It'll build faster than this one, which is a slower build. There we go. There's how we uh, would calculate a par yield. Um, and again, the par yield is just because we don't have a constant discount rate. We have, we're using uh, zero rates or spot rates for a number of periods. We don't have a constant rate. We don't know what the coupon would be to make it a par bond. Typically, when the coupon rate equals the market rate of return, or the required rate of return, we know we have a par bond if we're discounting every payment with the same discount rate. But here we're not. We're not discounting it with the same discount rate. So the question does arise as to, well, what coupon rate would make it a par bond? There we go. You're probably wondering, why do I need this? What, what, who cares? Like, what does this matter? And I get that too. Like, what? When would I ever use this? Ah, here's when you would use it. When we have interest rate risk and we need to take, we need to eliminate it or we want to protect ourselves from it, it's important to know what will get us to par so that we can construct a derivative contract or some forward rate agreement that would allow us to get to that point. That's all.